Hare Krishna. Dhanavad, Pro. Dhanavad. Dhanavad, Dhanavad. 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 We're trying to join on the big TV. There he is, Das Anu Das. Guru Garanga, Guru Garanga, Guru Garanga. Jai Maharaj, Dhanavad. Dhanavad. Let's see, gallery view. Who is with us today? Is that Sarasati? Dhanavad Maharaj, Dhanavad. Dhanavad, Sarasati. Oh, I need to put spectacles on for these small pictures. Oh, look, on Inditar and Jaya, Jaya Shekha Prabhu. They're in London today. And Shakira is in London today. Hare Krishna. Lavanya Moi Devi Dasi. Dandavat, Smash. Dandavat. You still in Italy? I am. I mean, I'm cemented in. <laughs> and Ru Rupa Vilas Prabhu with us too. Rupa Vilas Prabhu, Dandavat to you. Dandavat Maharaj to everyone. And Ranga Prabhu. And Raga Moi Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna. Dandavan Maharaj. Dandavadidi, good to have you with us. And we're all on time. Very British. You're being very British, Rupa, uh, Rupa Vilas Prabhu. And who is British here? Devashish Prabhu. Lavanya Moi Devi Dasi. As British as British can be. I agree and that. and Priya Krishna David Asi just joined us from Delhi. Dandavat. Dandavat Priya Krishna. Have you got a cold? No, Maharaj, I'm a little upset. It's fine. I, I'll be just listening today. Oh dear. Okay. May the whole take shelter of the holy name and may the holy name be your medicine. Medicine for us all, in fact. Hare Krishna. So devotees coming together from all the suburbs of London. And Vijay Krishna Prabhu from the east. Dandavat Vijay Krishna Prabhu from the eastern suburb of London. South East. Southeast. All right, you moved. Southeast, no, yeah. Yeah, and you moved. You moved to near Devashish Prabhu. Yeah, yeah. Good move. Yeah. All right. So from 
Johannesburg, from Manila, from near Milan in Italy, and from Brindavan, we've, and from East London, we've all come to join together with you all by yourself there in West London Temple, Rasamoy Pandita David Asi. So first of all, obeisances to all the devotees, Vanchakalpa Trubhyas Cha, Kripa Sindhubhya, Eva Cha, Patitanam Pavanebhya, Vaishnavebhya Namo Namo. Jai Shila Guru Dev, Shila Bhakti Sunda Govinda Maharaj Ki Jai, Jai Shila Guru Maharaj, Shila Bhakti Rokok Shridha, Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, and Jai Shila Prabhupada, Shila A.C. Bhakti Varanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai, and Jai Shri Rupanuga Guru Vaga Ki Jai, present day Shri Chaitanya Sarasat Acharya Vrinda Ki Jai. And Namo Maha Vadanyaya. Krishna Prema Pradayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gauratuje Namaha. So today's theme, today's theme is In the Age of Quarrel, the Lord's Golden Gift of Loving Devotion. And Beginning with this verse, Namo Mahavaranyaya, Krishna Prema Pradayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gauratuje Namaha. Beginning with this verse, today we can reflect certainly on the great gift of Kali Yuga and especially this Kali Yuga out of all of the Kali Yugas in the a daytime of Lord Brahma, which is very long. This Kali Yuga in particular, we've got Mahaprabhu himself coming to taste the highest form of devotion. And stunned by that, he's also distributing that highest devotion. Samantha, Hare Krishna. Welcome. <laughs> and... A long time ago, when I was young, in Navadip, we made a small booklet and we printed maybe four copies. So it wasn't a large distribution booklet, but it was a quick booklet. But we printed it off our uh, printer in Navadip and folded it and put the staples in the, in the binding. So it was a booklet. And we gave it the title, something like, Kali Yuga, or just Kali Yuga, perhaps, <laughs> just that the name on the front of it. And just a few verses collected there about the qualities of Kali Yuga, how to see the symptoms of Kali Yuga. And those verses, they were verses which when we read them, then we think, yes, what is written there? What's so extraordinary. We see that this is the world we live in now. And so um, several of them were taken from, no doubt, uh, the second uh, chapter, second canto of uh, the 12th, sorry, second chapter of the 12th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, there, uh, the title of that chapter is The Symptoms of Kali Yuga. So I know some of them were taken from here, some of the verses, but some of the verses were also taken from other places. And um, some verses come here, come up. I can just read one or two things just to remind us that we are in Kali Yuga. So just a few verses here. So this is from Srimad Bhagavatam. This is not from Canto 12, it's from Canto 1, Chapter 1, Verse 10 of Srimad Bhagavatam. O learned one, in this iron age of Kali, men have short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. So there's a verse for you. And 
then from different places i've got some verses here in dwarpa yuga devotees of lord vishnu and krishna rendered devotional service according to the principles of pancharatrika in this age of kali the supreme personality of godhead is worshipped simply by the chanting of his holy names and then i have here the canto canto uh, 12 but the important past chaitanya charitamrita here i have a, a sloka in my little notes in this age of kali the holy name of the lord the hare krishna mahamantra is the incarnation of lord krishna simply by chanting the holy name one associates with the lord directly anyone who does this is certainly delivered and if you want to know how kali yuga will progress maybe you don't <laughs> but <laughs> but harassed by famine and excessive taxes this is from bhagavatam chapter uh, canto 12 harassed by famine and excessive taxes people will resort to eating leaves roots flesh wild honey fruits flowers and seeds struck by drought they will become completely ruined hare krishna anyway there are many many things here and um, but there is another place where um kali yuga there are various quotations um and that's in that holy name the glories of the holy name and the ten offenses to be avoided booklet that shila gurudev would distribute at the time of uh, harinam initiation and so i mean while we're quoting verses which is what we're doing just now then we can also see one or two of these one of them almost every devotee knows from the brihan naradiya purana which is hare nama hare nama hare nama eva kevalam kalau nastyeva 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 gatiranyata almost every devotee knows this the holy name the holy name the holy name alone in this age of kali there is no other shelter no other shelter no other shelter this is one version of translation you can say the in also from the bri and naradiya purana the influence of kali yuga no longer affects one who constantly chants the holy names of the lord such as hare keshava govinda and vasudev ah right and here this verse we will hear often from the mouths of our uh, dear guru mars gurudev and educated masters and that is kaler dosha nidhe rajan asti he ko mahan gunaha ketana deva krishnasya mukta banda parang vrajet O oh, king this age of kali is a reservoir of inauspiciousness yet it has but one glorious quality simply by chanting the holy name of shri krishna the soul is freed from the bondage of maya and attains the shelter of the lord himself kaler dosha nidhe rajan to king parikshit asti heko mahan guna kirtanad eva krishnasya mukta banda parang vrajet and sometimes given as mukta sanga parang vrajet hare krishna hmm. how many more slokas do you want <laughs> we've got quite a lot here 
However, I was wondering where is one shloka. And I think it is in the Brihat Bhagavatamritam. There is a shloka which is telling us that those on the heavenly planets who are wise, who know what is what, they hanker to take their birth here on the earthly planet at this time, especially in Kali Yuga, because of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's advent. And maybe Devashish Prabhu knows where that verse is, but there is that verse which we keep coming across, I just I haven't come across it just now. Oh my goodness, I've come back to the screen. Lots of devotees have joined us. Praneshwari Devirasi, Ananda Sarupini, Madhu Gopal Prabhu, Govinda Nandini Didi, Shyama Sundari, Subhasini, all joined us in the last few minutes while we've been saying some of the quotations. And I don't think you need much of a description to con everybody here. We all know we're in Kali Yuga. We don't need much of a description to convince us we are in Kali Yuga. If you want a description, you may read Canto 12, verse number two. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Do you want me to read it? No. Okay, then I won't. I heard you all say no. We know we're in Kali Yuga. <laughs> Maharaj, Maharaj? Yes. Is it possible when you are reading this sloka to share it? Ah, uh, well, I finished reading, uh, but I can certainly share them. The last ones were from the book, that, um, The Ten Offenses is a booklet. A holy name, glories of the holy name, and the ten offenses to avoid. And other ones are just some verses I have around, which, but I can share them. But they're not on one piece of paper, as it were. Who else is with you there in West London? We have to make your picture bigger so I can see. Um, we have Krishna Vinodini here. Ananta Govinda's wife. And this is... Nita baby, Amala, Amala Krishna. Okay, Dandavat. <laughs> and Sachi Didi. Jai, Hare Krishna. Thank you for coming in front of the camera. We can all see you. Jai. All right. And now is 12.15 in, in the London temple. It's always such a great treasure to see you and hear you and to save us with your beautiful words. Also, we see you at home with other podcasts and you give us everything what we need. I mean, it is unbelievable actually that we have come in this line. I, I heard Guruma saying that it's almost not expected in a human life that this uh, Krishna consciousness, this line of thinking has come, and you all the time um, make us uh, that that aware and, and and happy and 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 conscious of that that great gift. Our gurus came to save us, and you also come to save us. You're in that line of of gurus to 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 give that to us and we cannot believe it how fortunate we are it's unexpected so sachi devi mm -hmm. sachi devi you tell everybody why you are in the temple why you are in the temple why you first came and why you are in the temple now until now because you are inspired to give your life in devotion so help inspire us all with that history, that realization. Actually, I, I, I cannot believe it that that happened to me, such a fallen soul and, and so much mercy and so much beauty and, so, and such an interesting uh, journey in which we are uh, graced to, to travel on and to make that transfer, to, to open up that consciousness of being I, I remember Gurudev saying, 
ego is not like being arrogant or a bully or somebody who is very, you know, like egoistic in this world, or we are very egoistic in this world. It is everything what we are surrounded by, actually. It's all a manifestation of, of an egoistic, selfish tendency. And now to transform ourselves by chanting the holy name, what you were explaining so nicely, to go in another layer of consciousness there where that infinite, beautiful Lord is, which can be our bosom friend, Guruma says, our best friend. And to be, to, by chanting the holy name, it calms down everything, what we are surrounded by and identifying with actually. And then by chanting the holy name and in that pure factory uh, process, we can see the even the material world that that is everywhere is the potency of the Lord. And then it becomes so beautiful. And so because it's Krishna is beautiful and it is magic, actually, it's so much there to what in our puppy brain we cannot conceive, actually. And that is what I, that process, because you were asking me and I'm not a very good a person to explain, but to, to be in that process, to, to, to have beautiful personalities as you in, in, in a, you know how I came in, in the mouth and I'm still such a fallen so everybody knows. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, that, how, what a beautiful process, what a beautiful Krishna who is showing us so many things. It's unbelievable, actually. And everything is so, so, uh, so, so, so palatable, yeah, in that process, in that process of liberation, of the liberation of that selfish, you know, maybe the Sharanagati process, we think, okay, I have to do this, I have to sur surrender. But then we get a little bit of taste and now we think, wow, what a liberation of myself. How wonderful this is to, to give our energy for the Lord, to give our uh, energy for the Vaishnavas, for the Jivas outside. So, Sachi Devi, Sachi Devi. So when you find that you forget about devotional service and you start hearing all the gossip of the outside world, how do you bring yourself quickly to remember Krishna again and devotional service again? How to get your head out of that hole if you find your head going into that whirlpool? Yeah, ex you hear sometimes with the internet and with the politics and that we are drawn into that I also. And then I see, wow, this is nasty. This is, this is giving me a very uh, low sort of energy. It doesn't make me happy. It is not, because we have felt already a little bit of taste how, how it feels to be, to, to, to see the Lord, to, to be with the devotees chanting bhajan, to do service to, to, to hear you talking, to read or hear Guru Maharaj or Buddha, you know, that is beautiful. That is nectar. That is what we, that is what is giving us our life. The rest is all draining. The rest is all what you're saying. It doesn't taste really good. Maybe we are attracted, maybe we are drawn a little bit because our senses are very weak, we are very insignificant, very but soon we have a little bit practice that we think, no, I don't want this. I know it's it's bad for me. It is not giving me strength for the next day or the next hours to um, um, to 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 uh, how do you say to 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 progress. No, to engage myself in the service of the Lord, what is my life. So a little bit on the theme for today, that is that 
If we see Kali Yuga and we start to be pointed out, you know, the things about Kali Yuga and the politics, like you're saying, the politics, the news and all these things that somebody somewhere is always talking about something, then at least we can think happily, it's Kali Yuga. This is the time of the greatest opportunity. So this is also another thing that when we see crazy things, instead of allowing our head to go into the crazy things, we keep our head out of it and say, great, it's Kali Yuga. And maybe, who knows what is our history, but maybe some of you or all of us prayed that can I please, I want to take my birth as a human on planet Earth in Kali Yuga because of this gift. And we will have been very aware it's Kali Yuga. So there's going to be all sorts of nonsense going on. But if somebody was, for instance, in a higher planet or you know, seriously trying to do their, some devotional life previously, and they hear about Kali Yuga, they'll think, yes, I'll tolerate the negative things of Kali Yuga in order for that greatest gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this way, Srila Gurudev emphasizing this tolerance, humility, giving honor to others, so that we can navigate the external Kali Yuga world and leave that to one side and engage in the valuable part of Kali Yuga, which is the chanting of the holy names of the Lord with devotional service mood and with the devotees in Sankirtan. So sometimes we see like ridiculous things. We do remind each other, great, we're in Kali Yuga. <laughs> we, we got our birth in Kali Yuga. We're so fortunate. Now let's chant Hare Krishna. Govinda, Govinda, and Gurudev, Srila Govinda Marsh, he knew very well it is Kali Yuga. And really, we didn't see Guru Mahar, uh, Guru, Gurudev, Srila Govinda Marsh, like reject anybody for like Kali Yuga kind of things. But where did he really reject was when people were unfaithful, going elsewhere, not having chaste spiritual behavior, there, that disturbed Gurudev very much. So we must utilize this opportunity and with this emphasis of humility, tolerance, giving honor to others, and how much Gurudev tolerated of the behavior of devotees, very, you know, Kali Yuga influenced behavior of devotees, but he considered that as an external thing rather than the, the heart, the faith in the heart of the devotees. And of course, the golden gift, the golden gift is that of the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the highest quarter, Goloka Vrindavan. This is the golden ticket given by him. So Kali Yuga, wonderful things and by the way i'm not sure if i have this verse in front of me but earlier on i was going through the verses and i saw a verse which said how in kali yuga people will life will be reduced to 50 years in due course of time so you know we get a hint of things that could go wrong and we see dried up rivers polluted rivers we see you know, armies on both, you know, in left, right, here, there, everywhere. We see now pestilence, uh, all these things. We can see how things can go very wrong. But the holy name is now accessible at the end of Kali Yuga. Then if we see that section in Bhagavatam, we can understand that the, by the end of Kali Yuga, these things basically are not going to be accessible at all. Then Kauki comes with his sword and as Gurudev points out not with a jet fighter or some uh, <laughs> high-tech high-tech uh, bomb or something to annihilate the demons but with a sword and then Gurudev he said I've been thinking why a sword and not something else that Kalki will come and Gurudev saying 
because as Kali Yuga goes on, all of this technology will devour itself. And so people will be resorting to their animalistic nature, nature and it'll be the strongest, the strongest winds, that kind of a animal similarity with animal existence. So now we have our opportunity and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has come to give us this, this Yuga Dharma, but in this Kali Yuga, turbocharged by his own uh, necessity to understand the taste of Radharani's service to him, her mood. And it is that that he is distributing, that highest quarter. And hence Guru Maharaj's expressions of being hurled down to Vaikuntha, etc. That our view, his view of us and his view of the goal that is given, available to us by Mahaprabhu, is Goloka Vrindavan, full self-surrender, through the chanting of the holy names. So, this is our wonderful opportunity. Devashish Prabhu, you are our, our storehouse of all good conceptions. If only you that always so come well. out with many, with, with many treasures whenever we meet. Yep. Yes, Marge. In uh, way back, I don't know if you remember when, we, when the um, uh, Premadama Deva Stotram was published with English translation. The first, the first one. The first one. It, it didn't have a cover. I don't know if you remember, it was just the booklet, but no cover to the book. So mm -hmm. we had a number in London, and one of our devotees, he made a cover for it. So, and that was attached to it, and, you know, we used that for when, when we would give it to others. And, and he wanted, what will be the English translation of Prema Dharma Deva Stotram? So he, we asked Srila Sridhar Maharaj, Srila Guru Maharaj, what can we call this book in English? And Guru Maharaj's reply was, the golden gift of the golden Lord. So that's what he made that with. He was good at calligraphy. He made some like calligraphy um, writing of that. And we made that, illustrated the cover of the book. The golden gift of the golden Lord. And, re and now I was thinking about that when I thought, what will be the title of this uh, today's theme of today's talk and really you know i remember <laughs> i remember being in iskon and one of the devotees we you know there's this whole thing we often hear it that within kali yuga a a, a, a satya yuga will appear within the kali yuga and so someone was asking one of the one of the um uh, sannyasi iskon sannyasi and in the, who was giving the class if the if the, the Satya Yuga will come in the Kali Yuga, what's going to happen to all the pubs? He said, and uh, and uh, that devotee, that sannyasi, his reply was, "They'll all become nectar bars." <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> but but seriously, somebody asked Srila Sridhar Maharaj this same question, not about <laughs> the pubs, but uh, what what will it, what does it mean? that a golden age will appear within the Kali age. What does that mean? And, and Srila Guru Maharaj said, what do you think? Do you think that in Satya Yuga, everybody was Krishna conscious? And he said, well, yeah, yeah, I did think that, yes. And Guru Maharaj said, no, actually, although people lived for thousands of years and they only engaged in cultivation of spiritual life, it was more or less just meditation on abstract Brahman. It wasn't meditation on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna in the general sense. And maybe some specific devotees were doing that, but generally that wasn't the case. <laughs> then, then Guru Maharaj said, you know, we have this saying in Bengal that the, the rainy day is not the bad day, but the bad day is that day when we can't hear something about Krishna. 
So Guru Maharaj said, what, so what is good and what is bad, in our estimation, will be based on the degree of revelation, of the degree of spiritual knowledge that's available to us. So what Mahaprabhu Chaitanya Dev has come to give is, you know, as uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami has given in the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Anar Pita Chirim Chirat Kurune Avartina Kalo Samar Paitam Munuto Jwala Rafam Sabhakti Shriyam. This, this expression, Anar Pita Chirim Chirat, which means you have come to give that thing which has never been given before. So what Mahaprabhu comes to give, and this is not every Kali Yuga, but this particular Kali Yuga, as we know, which is a very special Kali Yuga, where Krishna appears in the previous to that, the Dapra Yuga, he appears as Shwayam Bhagavan Krishna in his fullness. So similarly in this Kali Yuga, Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Dev appears as uh, the avatari, the the Mahaprabhu Chaitanya Dev in his fullness. And uh, he has come to give that conception of, of spiritual life, which has never been given before. The, the devotion to the divine couple of Radha Govinda in Madhura Rasa, that has never been distributed in the world before. Even when Krishna came and showed those pastimes, it was to a closed group. It wasn't like widely distributed, but Mahaprabhu came to widely distribute that conception to everyone. So this is actually the uh, conception of... Uh, uh, oh, sorry, I need to just mute somebody, I think. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, that conception Mahaprabhu has come to give, never been given before. And so that is why, you know, the, the um, gods in the heaven are praying to take their birth in this Kali Juga. So they themselves can also avail themselves to that, for that golden gift that Mahaprabhu has come to give. If we hear, if we read about that the Satya Yuga, those who are engaged in the cultivation of the spirit in the, in the Satya Yuga, which means actually everyone, Guru Maharaj explained, there's no marriage in Satya Yuga because there was no seduction. There was no, there was no, um, uh, no consideration of attraction between male and female. And, the, and the, um, the generation of children was done by particular people, the Prajapatis. They made the, uh, the children, you can say. It wasn't, it wasn't a family unit. There was no such thing. Everybody just spent all their time engaged in meditation. And, and really, for thousands of years, consistently, like they, you know, most people, the average lifespan, we understand, was... A thousand, uh, three thousand years that most people would live. Three thousand years, and in that time, they would only cultivate their uh, spiritual nature, but not uh, devotion to Lord Krishna. And and in a uh, Treta Juga, um, there the uh, method for self-realization was all kinds of uh, sacrifices, and. You know, uh, Ashwa made a sacrifice, Rajasuya sacrifice, Go made a sacrifice, all these kinds of sacrifice that they would do, like <coughs> not possible in Kali Juga, Imp impossible in Kali Juga. In, in, that, in those times, any Brahman worth his salt, he can ignite the fire just by mantra. He doesn't need a box of matches or a lighter to do that. Anyone can do that. But if you can find a, one Brahmin in India that can do that, he'll be, that people will think he's a god. And this was, this was just like basic, you know, basic training of a Brahmin. First thing is how to light the sacrificial fire. In Kali Yuga, no one can even do that. So what to speak of the actual performance of those sacrifices. And in the Dapra Yuga, 
elaborate temple worship and, and so elaborate that you would offer a flower to the deity in the temple on a gold, solid gold plate. And then you wouldn't wash that plate and use it for the next offering. It would be discarded. So you, can you imagine how much wealth it would, would take to do the worship in the temple? Here in the UK, we complain about the high price of flowers we, that we buy to offer to the Lord. And all those flowers, mainly, they don't even have any scent or anything. But, you know, but what to speak of that? If we had to make every offering on a solid gold plate once and then discard it, it would be impossible. So we can understand that none of these things are possible in the Kali Yuga. Meditation is not possible. It doesn't mean, you know, that you, got, that you do half an hour's meditation, you know, in front of a candle or something. I was reading, you know, the, um, uh, about the habits of successful people. And they're saying that those who meditate, they more, they're more successful in their life. You know, they're more calm, they're more peaceful and more productive. But what were they saying is the optimum time for meditation in your day. Seven minutes. Seven minutes meditation every day, optimal. That's very good. So if you can do seven minutes meditation, you're considered a great person. If you can do, you know, 20 minutes yoga practice that you learned at the community center, you're considered highly advanced spiritual person in, in this age. But we can understand that when they had to meditate constantly for 3,000 years to perfect their practice, that isn't possible in Kali Yuga. The, the types of sacrifice, not possible in Kali Yuga. In fact, it's forbidden to do sacrifice in Kali Yuga. That means animal sacrifice. And, in, uh, and the kind of worship that they used to do in the temples, that's also impossible in this Kali Yuga. So what are we left with? Nothing, actually. There's nothing that we can do in Kali Yuga, except Mahaprabhu came and gave all of those things that you can gain from that, that, those practices of previous ages. You can get that and so much more simply by the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It is a very easy thing and nothing else required. As Maharaj told that verse, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevanam. That there's no other way, no other way, no other way except to chant the holy name, chant the holy name, chant the holy name. I read that uh, I think it's Baladev Vijabhushan in his Gita commentary. He mentions this verse and says, why it's told three times, no other way, no other way, no other way. It means not by karma, not by yoga and not by gyan, but only by bhakti, only by the chanting of the holy name of Krishna. So they're so simple that anyone can do that. And you can do it anywhere, any place, any time, any circumstance. You can chant the holy name of the Lord. You can chant it loudly. You can chant it softly. You can chant it in your mind. You can do any, all the time you can chant Hare Krishna. And if... Mahaprabhu has given us the clue. If we can be humble, tolerant, and give honor to others, and not expect any respect or honor for our own self, then we can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. And so Srila Gurudev would say, this is our religion, actually, to practice humility, to practice tolerance, to practice giving honor to others, and to practice not expecting any honor for ourselves. And when we say practice, it's because we, the opposite is our nature. All the time, we're, we're not humble, we're arrogant. And all the time, we are intolerant. And all the time, we want, we want so much honor for ourselves, and we hate to give honor to others. So we have to practice those things. We have to practice. We have to stand back and say, in every time, place, and circumstance, in this situation, how will I practice humility? In this situation, how will I practice tolerance? 
In this situation, how will I be able to honor others? And in this situation, how can I abjure that any honor or respect that's coming to me? That's our sadhana, actually. And without that sadhana, there's no possibility of our chanting of the holy name of the Lord, really chanting the holy name of the Lord. We may say the words, we may make the sound, but it won't be real until we're able to do this sadhana with sincerity. And Guru Maharaj would say, it is the trade secret of devotion. This verse of Mahaprabhu is of all the Shikshastakam, for us, the sadhakas, this is the most important verse. And Gurudev, Srila Gurudev, when he came, Srila Govinda Maharaj, on his world tours, he said, I'm thinking, you know, every, they, they are all enlightened with Krishna consciousness through Swami Maharaj already. Then what will I tell them? Then he said, but I see that they've been chanting Hare Krishna 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and no one getting the result. Then why is that? Either the process is faulty or our application of the process must be faulty. Then we will see that that is the case. That we are not applying ourselves to the process properly because we are not humble, we are not tolerant, we are not giving honor to others, and we're expecting all kinds of honor and respect for ourselves. So, the, so from the day, from day one, Srila Gurudev preached this verse. Not only preach this verse, the very embodiment of this verse, Srila Govinda Maharaj. Until the last day, he's preaching this. This is his teaching to the world. And we should try to take that into our heart. And then we will be able to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra all the time. Really chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And we will obtain that golden gift of the Golden Lord. So this is my contribution today. Jai, Jai Devashish for all. And, you know, really we feel that Gurudev is in one of these Zoom boxes. <laughs> he's watching, he's seeing, he's hearing. And he, will, he is happy to hear that as much as possible, we will keep reminding ourselves and repeating about this Trinata Pisu Nichena. And so, not that, oh, he said it so many times, we don't have to say it. He wants us all to say it. And he says, this is the very process to chant the holy name of the Lord. Hare Krishna. And look at Bhaktivino Thakur's songs. I mean, really, just see the mood that he's giving in his songs. He's even saying, may I be born again as a bird or an animal as long as, it's in, as it's, it is in the home of your devotee, O oh Lord. And repeatedly, repeatedly we see that it is after millions of lifetimes that we get a human body. And now we've got a human body, this rare human body then we should be very careful to use it properly. And this is the best possible time. We can think it doesn't get better than this, as the expression goes. Bajahure manna. This song is giving us this idea. And our life, we are thinking, oh, I'm going to live another 30 years, 20 years, 60 years for you young ones, 90 years for you very young ones. But... As that same song says, that our life is tottering like that water, drop of water on a lotus leaf, which is, looks like mercury. For those of you in England who haven't seen a lotus leaf, oh, you've seen a lotus leaf. Anyway, it's like mercury. It's just a bob bubble of water, and at any moment, it can slip off the leaf. And so our life can also slip out from our body at any moment. And it will, it will slip out of our body, that we know. So, while we have our body, while we have our association, this is the golden gift of the golden Lord, as Devashish Prabhu was saying, that Guru Maharaj gave that as the title, Prema Dhamma Deva Stotram. So, in the age of quarrel, 
the Lord's golden gift of loving devotion is actually coming through means Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Lord himself, the golden Lord with the golden gift. Yeah. And Prema Dharma Deva Stotram. Why do we sing 10 verses of this every day? Because it is wonderful. <laughs> Why do we read Chaitanya Charitamrita every day? Because it's wonderful. Why do we read the books of Guru Maharaj and Guru Dev and Srila Prabhupada every day? These are the great, wonderful opportunity for us all. Yes. Where's Lavanya Moy? Lavanya Moy, David Asi. You're usually so busy in the kitchen and here and there, but we'd like to hear a few words from you, please. We are coming humbly begging a contribution. You are very young, but you are an old devotee. Please. I'm not a devotee. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Aspiring. I'm then, really not very good at speaking, you know. I mean, I can talk a lot of nonsense, but um, talking anything quality is not my forte, really. <laughs> but you are living, okay, you are living practically as, practically as a devotee. You do the things that are required, and that includes going right into Kali Yuga, the Glastonbury festivals and places like this. Yeah. So what is the armor? What is our shield when we go into the degraded world? What is the shield for the devotees? Um, well, um, I know for myself that, um, well, we have to distribute um, Gurudev's and Guru Maharaj's and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. So we have to we have to do that. If we've been given that, then we have to share it. We can't just hold it for ourselves. So uh, we can act as their agent and go to the people and distribute, you know, get them to do some service for the Lord also via our guru's line. So that's our that's our shield in the way that we are understanding why we're doing it. I mean, if we think we're going to get contaminated and things like that for myself, that's not really possible. I'm already contaminated by that. It's not really going to bother me. But, um, yeah, I remember when I first used to start collecting, you know, and at first, I, oh, everyone's a demon, oh, that was silly nonsense. And then I realized that actually everyone was giving very kindly, you know, and actually really, you know, 99% of the population are just, you know, in ignorance like we all were at some point before we met Guru and so um, they're all really nice people, good people who are trying to, you know, live a decent life in as they know. So, um, yeah, it's uh, actually quite a pleasant interaction to be able to go and, you know, devotees distribute books or collections. It's, um, it's nice. It's a simple service, you know, it's not too... Um, complicated in many ways it's just if you can get to the people to get them to give some service to guru then you've benefited they've benefited it's sweet you know so remember why we are there not to be part of that but to be distributing guru and goranga's mercy yeah, sure jai and when i mentioned that word armor just now mm -hmm. Then I was reminded that Guru Maharaj actually uses that word armor, but I looked it up. He uses it in a, in a little bit of a different context. And uh, in the loving search for the lost servant, Guru Maharaj says, when we think about the pastimes of the absolute, we, the finite, will have to wear this armor, this following armor, like a soldier wears an armor, right? Is aher iva gati premna svabhava kutila bhavet. That is, we must understand that Krishna's pastimes are naturally crooked, just like the movement of a snake. A snake cannot move in a straight line, he moves in a zigzag way. The waves that flow from the absolute move in the same way. That characteristic of Krishna Leela is always maintained above everything else. Krishna can never be ruled by any law. 
With this initial consideration, we should approach any study of the absolute. We must keep in mind that he is absolute and we are infinitesimal. He is ad hoc suger, transcendental, beyond the world of our experience. So this armor that Krishna, he can go whenever way he likes because he because he's the Lord. Anyway, this was a little bit of a different context, but the word armor came into our thought. So it lead, led there too. Hare Krishna. Jai, thank you. Lavani Moi Devi Rasi. And anything from anybody, a contribution. First, we can ask a contribution. How do you face Kali Yuga in a healthy way? Any volunteers to give a paragraph? <laughs> I told you how I face Kali Yuga. <laughs> think, see something crazy and we think, great, we're in Kali Yuga. Now, better chant Hare Krishna. Okay. But you, others must have something to say too. How to face Kali Yuga. Okay, any question from anybody? <laughs> um, Sati wants to say something. <laughs> Maybe being together in the association of the Vaishnavas and devotees and with the guidance of the devotees, I think we will get some strength to proceed in these difficult times. We were reading today the song of Vaishnava Thakur and the importance of Vaishnava association, Sadhu Sangha essential in our practice in life because alone we cannot proceed we have to be together yes sarasati definitely and everything comes back to sadhu sangha actually when we see the statements of gurudev and guru maharaj everything is coming to the association of the devotees from the beginning the middle the end and by ourselves, then we are very weak in this world. So we must try to keep association of the Vaishnavas and keep that in our ears, in our thought and in our activity. And it's from the Vaishnavas that we get everything, in fact. Not the words, but the substance. It's heart to heart. And sometimes we understand that more and sometimes less. Sometimes we get a little glimpse. Oh, yes. Living things. Life comes from life. And so life of Krishna consciousness comes from the hearts of the living devotees. The life comes from life. Yeah. Maharaj, also, when we face difficulties, just joining the the kirtan, and the bhajans, it helps so much. It's very soothing to just being with the devotees together and, and chanting and, you know, that's, that's really a nourishing. And, you know, Saraswati, just as you said that, just before that, I kind of paused and I think, should I say something else? But I'm kind of saying many things. But I also feel... Myself, if we don't go in the morning program, don't start the day singing bhajans, don't end the day singing, then we definitely feel something is missing. Mm. So however, wherever we are, whether we're in a temple, whether we're not in a temple, we should try to find where we can participate in bhajan. Now through the Facebook and so many places, the devotees in different places are are engaged, the artists are going on, the bhajans are going on, Hari Qatar is going on around the world. And actually one of our American devotees, Chintamani, Praneshwari knows her, Chintamani, she said, now practically any time of day or night, there's somewhere where we can go, where we can hear some Hari Qatar, either directly or recorded. The, the morning programs, etc. So we should try to keep our sadhana with the devotee association as much as possible. Otherwise, 
here where we are there's a village across the way here and we look in that village and think what is it that everybody just gets up out of bed and then goes to work without any without any kind of proper start to the day we also go to work but we are going to savor instead of going to to work but even then we're starting the day with the kirtan as you say joining together arati kirtan reading prasadam together and in kirtan everybody is equal it is no question of someone is you know rich person poor person educated person uneducated person kirtan makes everyone equal happily equally joyful to chant the lord's names and maharaj um nitai and vida chandra start a 3 hours kirtan and the, the children especially they are really happy with that they are really joining and sitting there for like more than an hour the little ones so they i mean they are not able to sit in a class for you know for that long but they can sit and listen and chant and sing it. that's nice jain very good what yes very good start with 3 hours and end with 24 hours <laughs> <laughs> hare krishna all right devashish prabhu any last word for us all give us some hope Uh, we all live in hope, isn't it? That's uh, the thing that gives us um, our reason to go on is that the Lord will be merciful to us and that we will continue to get the association of the Vaishnavas. And an association doesn't just mean physical proximity, as we know. It must be in the line of service. Then it will be association. Yes. and if you allow me it came in my mind just now four short verses ke jabe ke jabe this song by lochandas tako and some of you know it on indita jay shekha you certainly know it we've been singing it here in the temple quite a bit it's super beautiful and maybe all of you know it but i'll read the translation of it that's given here who will go oh brother who will go to cross the ocean of material existence the wealth and great fortune of this age of kali is the incarnation of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu my and then he's saying amar gorangera ghate My Lord Goranga stands at the ghat the jetty ready to ferry his servants upstream across this material existence for no charge he is immediately taking them the ferry boat is the holy names of the lord and the spiritual master is the captain <clears throat> and the oars are the outstretched arms of the devotees in sankirtan <laughs> the favorable wind is divine love for shri krishna and all the fallen souls have been rescued on that boat only mahananda das is left behind due to the faults of his own misdeeds oh dear <laughs> anyway wonderful it's lochandas but we can't say lochandas his name has been left behind but that was his signature k jabi k jabi this song in the song book that we have okay if bhaktivinoda tako if lochandas tako if 
Mahaprabhu, Guru Dev, Guru Maharaj can't wake us up. What hope is there for us? So we better slap our faces, wake ourselves up to our present good fortune position at this moment. And as Guru Dev would say, as you all know, utilize our fortune nicely. Together, chant Hare Krishna and something else, be happy. That's it. I remember now. Maharaj, right. um, Pandita, Pandita would like to go to the temple room and show you the, the kirtan. Please, and let <laughs> us join the kirtan. Then, then what you can do, Saraswati? Hello, Saraswati. Yes, yes. So what you can do, we'll, now we'll give our jais and give our obeisances to each other. You can take us into the temple room and you can keep that running for a little while. And myself, I'll hear and others will hear with our microphones off. So Jai Shila Gurudev Shila Bhakti Sunda Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Shila Guru Maharaj Shila Bhakti Rokko Kshidha Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Shila Prabhupada Shila AC Bhakti Ranta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai 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 Bhagavan Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Ki Jai 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 Shri Rupanuga Guru Vaga Ki Jai Shri Chaitanya Sarasar Acharya Brinda Ki Jai yeah. But Devashish Prabhu Ki Jai, all okay. the assembled devotees from all parts of the world, Ki Jai. Jai. And the Ananta Koti Vaishnava Rinda Ki Jai. Yeah. Nitai yeah. Gaur Premanandi. Hari Hari Bol. And our obeisances to each other. Sudan Maharaj Ki Jai. Ancha Kaupaturubhya's cha. Tripasya Eva cha. Patitanam Pavanevyo. Vepra Namo Namaha. So let us come into the the temple room and then they'll chant Hare Krishna and you can stay or you can put be in the background as you like. I'll listen for a little while. Nitai Gaura Premanandi. So please don't stop. We'll be very happy to hear and join in. Please continue. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Dandavad, Dandavad to one and all. Dandavad Maharaj. Dandavad. <laughs> We're getting ready for IT now. So. <laughs> All right, beautiful. So please continue happily. I'm hearing in the background. Okay, my head. <laughs> hari, hari. <laughs> Maybe it's not, it's not, um, so, something. Dandavat to all the Dandavat. Dandavat Hare Krishna to all. I'm just trying to figure out how to show the arty.
because I don't have a stand, so please bear with me.